if we're getting the same education as the whites, but not the same pay, why should we be paying the same price for the same education that they get? I'm gonna need you to make that make sense. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, listen up. Listen up. Nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. Is anybody out there? Is anybody? Is anybody out there? Wi-Fi's. Wi-Fi's, where you at? Oh, okay. Well, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Demi and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome to my HBCU Me Please episode of The Wireless Woman. Where we will be talking all about why myself and several of my colleagues believe that pretty much all melanated people should begin their higher education in an HBCU. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll, and I need all of my HBCU alums to the front of the class so we can read these people aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome, Wi Fi. In this episode, we are going to be talking all about HBCUs, but go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. some comments below you can tell me anything and if there's content that you'd like to see that you're not make sure you hit me up in those comments you're gonna get a response from me one way or the other you're gonna get a response from me so let's get right into it HBCUs I am of the mind that all melanated people should go to an HBCU but I have very practical reasons for why I believe that you know, we are living in economic times where the dollar just doesn't go as far as it used to because of inflation. You know how things have just been getting more and more expensive over the past couple years? Well, that's called inflation, the rise of prices of around us. And correspondingly, education just isn't going as far as it used to. At this point, a bachelor's degree is pretty much just a glorified high school diploma. According to educationdata.org, the average student loan debt in America is nearly $40,000. If we as black people are going to earn for the black men 83 cents on the dollar, for the black woman 67 cents on the dollar, give or take, why should we be throwing ourselves into debt, into student loan debt, patronizing PWIs? However, and thankfully, I am not going through the same mental tolls that I went through with my first PWI, which was no sense of community, depression, and loneliness. And just to be clear, no, this is not some type of freshman fear. This is my PWI because the feelings went away when I got to my HBCU. If we're getting the same education as the whites, but not the same pay, why should we be paying the same price for the same education that they get. I'm gonna need you to make that make sense. 
or let's say their 10 to 15 percent is coming off a whole dollar and your 10 to 15 percent is coming off of 87 cents or in the case of a black woman 63 cents so these standard rules of thumb were not written for or with black people in mind so if we're not going to get equal pay for the same education it's not like they're going to look at tuition differently for black students than they would for whites and yes there are black students that get financial aid but not disproportionately more than white students who also receive yield financial aid so at this point if we're going to be put into competition with whites in the educational field the hbcu gives black people a unique experience of being able to be educated by the most elite people in their culture. I can honestly say from my own experience that the majority of my professors at my HBCU were multicultural. They had the same UNC curriculum as UNC Charlotte, as Chapel Hill, as any of the other state schools like North Carolina State. And at this point, Fayetteville State, my alma mater, is an NC Promise School. You can go to college for $500 a semester. Like this is really a steal and you're getting an accredited degree. We as black people don't really have places where we own industry and this is one place where we can start taking control of our own education. And honestly, it's just really not beneficial to go that far into debt behind a degree that's not going to even pay for itself. Millions of Americans have one thing in common, a crippling amount of student debt. A bachelor's degree is not going to earn you enough money to even offset the expense of the time taken away to go and do education, where you lose time building experience on a job and the actual cost of the education itself. I am an avid watcher of maths, married at first sight. And I mean, last couple of seasons just been total trash, but this one, uh, we gonna wait and see how it goes. Two of the wives on this show are carrying massive amounts of student loan debt. And this has come up on the honeymoons. So if these type of issues are making an impact on marriage, on other social institutions, then we as black people who are already 238% behind in the wealth gap really need to conceive of whether or not these degrees, this education is a setup for success or a setback. One survey found that 21% of borrowers had delayed getting married, 26% had pushed back having kids, and 36% had put off buying a home. These student loans have a great impact on our ability to own property. They play a huge part in whether we will be able to close pay gaps and wealth gaps in our generation. A lot of black people are still coming out of that first to go to college generation. And there's no reason why trying to better yourself and give yourself that educational footing should cost you economic and financial footing, especially when these HBCUs really give a wealth of knowledge and experience. I can honestly say, and I always say this when people ask me about going to an HBCU, I tell people I didn't just get a degree, I got an education. Education is more about your approach to learning. It's more about the way you engage knowledge than it really is about the piece of paper that they write on. And honestly, I say this, even to those who have done their undergraduate work at a PWI, it's not too late to turn around and save some money <laughs> on a graduate degree from an HBCU. It really will take your education and enrich it in ways that you really can't conceive of outside of the culture of those campuses. Now, don't get me wrong. HBCUs are just like every other black space. They are plagued with certain issues that are only represented in our culture. I'm in the ghetto. 
da, 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 da. However, it also gives us ground zero of being able to look at what the problems are and socially engineer some solutions. You know, our young people are going to be the biggest proponents of what the next generation does. When you look at the Black Panthers, their enrollment was mostly 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old people. A lot of our civil rights leaders were educated in HBCUs. They were building political bases in these institutions, being able to push forward some of the greatest civil rights agendas of our time. And in the 1950s and 60s, Tougaloo moved to center stage when Jackson was getting involved in the civil rights movement and they moved center stage with many students being involved. Social activism was very high here at this campus. I know that because of all the things that we see in our community, it takes away from the things we actually got together and accomplished under a government, in a country, in a system that was designed to make sure we failed. And we still made all of these strides. We still held on to the integrity of what we wanted to maintain in this country as black people. And education is a big part of that. You know, if we can continue to build our HBCUs up, they can feed back into primary and secondary schools. This is where our educators are going to come from in large part. And it gives us, like I said, the footing to step up of being able to now not come out of college in debt. It gives us the autonomy to choose professions and jobs that give back to our community because we're not so busy trying to pay back Sally Mae. It's something to think about. I have college age children and they are very excited about going to HBCUs. And honestly, the money that's saved on them being able to get bachelor's degrees, it's like a win-win situation. I really think we're seeing so many of these celebrities that are pushing going to HBCUs as a black agenda, but it honestly just makes financial sense for where we are at this point in time in the culture. I mean, this is a huge problem for white society right now. And we have the option of being able to solve this problem within our own communities with the institutions that more often than not are right in your backyard. So it's something to consider, something to think about. If you are feeling that vibe, go ahead and drop me that fire headphones emoji in the comments. Tell me, did you attend a HBCU? Did you wish you had? Cause come on now, come on the bands the cheerleaders. My ex-husband went to Campbell and I took him to homecoming at Fayetteville State one year. OMG. I thought this man wanted to enroll back in college immediately. He was like, if I knew, if I knew then what I know now. <laughs> But my point is, you know, the experience of it is unmatched. Education is more than just credentials, more than just credits. It is about our development as black people. So those of you that are millennials like me and your children are coming up on being college stage, consider it. You know, the prestige of that paper means nothing when they're slaving away on a job that they don't love and aren't passionate about trying to pay back the taskmaster that is student loans. But make sure you tell me all about your HBCU experiences. If you went to a PWI, which one? I'd like to know how those experiences maybe differ from the HBCU experiences. Let's go ahead and get a discussion going down in those comments. But until the next time, you already know the deal. Class is now dismissed. Thank you, Wi-Fi's, for sticking around until the very end of this episode.
episode. If you like this content, you might want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click this link to subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.